Hello, welcome everyone. It's a quick follow-up. Uh, the other day we did a webinar and uh, gave out some seasonal tendencies as well as my outlook for what the market was undergoing. First and foremost, let's knock this out of the park real quick and get this out of the way. Um, one of the tools that we used to identify that crude oil was absolutely getting way overbought, while the on-balance volume looked like it was going to support that higher trend, this little uh, indicator right there is actually open interest. And one of the things that I always found is that when markets go up in commodities with a decline in open interest, it's not a very uh, positive event. And it shows that the trend, that the, at least the commitment from those who hold positions are starting to liquidate their long. So where does the rise come from? Most more than likely a short squeeze uh, and then people weak longs come chasing into the market. And that's why we had such a, a, a negative reaction in the market today off of this high. Uh, that was one of the tools that we talked about as well as share in our seminars that we give. What indicators work to give traders a better edge in the marketplace? Next, let's take a look at today's action in the e-mini S&Ps. And a lot of people have been really raving about the um, algo, uh, the person algo uh, optimizer. And this is a program that helps us to utilize and back test our own studies as well as auto execute into trades. Today, um, a couple things have happened here um, in the marketplace. We opened lower. We came in and. Many of you know that we were talking about this really strange phenomenon about the breadth of the um, NASDAQ weakening, the NASDAQ composite, that is, the New York Stock Exchange and the Russell, something we talked about uh, the, earlier this week and shared uh, in our webinar. And I really encourage you to go back and, and review that, that session because it, it gave out what sectors we're expecting to um, maybe perform better this quarter and what sectors might be under some struggling. But nonetheless, as you can uh, see here, uh, the system today, we got a, a false little sell signal started off the box, uh, got stopped out. Uh, we had a buy signal, got stopped out of the box. And then finally, uh, we're on the right side. The trend uh, continues. And again, not every single trade is going to be a winner. But as you can see, it definitely gets into um, really good setups. I'm a little concerned right now. This is a volume indicator right here. We're starting to see the volume flatting, but the trade uh, was sh we were short. It covered half the position, sold two out of one, and it's still trailing the stop. Uh, this gray line in the sand is the trailing stop function here, uh, which would be almost a 10 point giveaway unless we get a new trailing stop function while I do this video here. Um, so what do I expect out of the market moving forward? From a day trading perspective, when I say I'm getting a little bit nervous, um, let's take a look at this page real quick. Uh, I'm not nervous about being short. I'm nervous about the market having a short covering pop. Um, I, I still think that we've got some downside. My massive support is going to come in at old pivot resistance, uh, quarterly pivot point, and this month's support, which in the spiders is 286.98. The advanced decline has been weakening. Uh, structurally, the uh, I know that this week everyone made a really big deal about the Dow Jones making a new high. Uh, we have a theory about that, which I'll explain later. But here's the real story that I put out, and many of you uh, were present in that webinar. The Russell, it's not the fact that the advanced decline has continued to weaken in the Russell. It's the duration of that weakness that we saw, and it, it occurred in these three stock indices the NYSE, the NASDAQ Composite, and the Russell. So I wanted to point out that while we see weakening breadth in the market overall, this is not positive. And then finally, lastly, many of you know that we gave out uh, Amazon. A couple of things that I wanted to point out is that we had a weekly sell signal. The person's market catcher, which is a relative strength tool, powerful tool. You can find this not just on my lifetime exclusive package here with TradeStation, but for you, you folks that use Thinkorswim, it's under my name, PMC indicator. It's a relative strength. And here's what I wanted to point out. Number one, the market over time has gone up and we finally generated a PPS sell signal up here. And uh, as you can see, and when we got that sell signal, it was on weakening relative strength with the overall market. Uh, the momentum of the market was weakening and the volume was not pressing, supporting a rally of uh, that we saw back in, in, in mid to late September. 
So while the weekly is in a sell mode, what we were doing, and we fired this off on our Twitter account the other day. If you go look and I said, hey, we're setting up to an interesting situation. If we get a close $2 lower, um, we're going to get a nice sell signal out of Amazon. We did take advantage of this in the form of a bare put butterfly spread in our live trading room, which we've covered that position and taken profits. But here's a clear evidence of a potential double top in the market formed with that last conditional change breakdown, which is that white line in the sand of support, a PPS sell signal. But again, the most impressive of all patterns is the low closed OG, which we um, put out as a what I have as a proprietary trade system. But we published that in several books going back almost now two decades. It's absolutely phenomenal. So um, I think combined with the just to, to review what does the market condition look like we tried to test new highs the relative strength weakened showing a classic bearish divergence pattern the market tried to get up at or near its old high and the relative strength was actually negative and this is stuff that we give lessons and teach people how to get better use of their technical indicators and the indicators they need to be using in today's environment. So when a market makes a test the high and the relative strength is diverging or weakened and we get structural weakening or bearish divergence in a volume indicator comparing an old high and how did that volume and relative strength hold up and the newer high and what is the structural retest of that high if it's on weakening relative strength with weakening volume, it is a market that is susceptible for massive declines. And now we've got it right now. I've sent a tweet out saying there's a lot of stocks that have that same pattern right now. Apple. Now, Apple did make a newer high. It took out the high of September, as you see here. And I wanted to, to point this out because we're, we're actually coming into almost a very similar pattern formation on Apple. What do I mean by that? Well, Apple did make a newer high. Relative strength is weaker than its prior time period high. And the volume structure, it rallied on a weaker volume structure. Funny thing is, is let's go back and look at this year. Apple has, I'm not saying Apple's going to crash to zero, but, you know, maybe we could see at, at the very least a 220, if not the 215 area. And who knows if things start to get a little bit uglier in the week ahead. Could we see 210? We'll, we'll see if the market sell-off, number one, continues. We just don't make a, a prediction of a new a, a high or a top in the market on one day, right? I mean, this is it hasn't even had a consecutive series of lower high, lower lows over the last few days. But one thing I can say that's a coincidence about the way Apple trades is it typically goes up, sets back, makes a newer high, and when it makes a newer high and you get a volume divergence, meaning the secondary number two high, the volume at that corresponding same point, right? If you look at the number one point in price, the number one point, and you take a look at the number two point, you'll see the relative strengths weak, the volumes weak. It has a tendency. Apple has a tendency to make newer highs on weakening relative strength structure and then has a little bit of a sell off. And so that's what I would be expecting to see in Apple moving forward. Now, I sent a text about look at the uh, the way the Russell is. And right now, the Russell, you'll see these dots, these green dots. We broke through support. We're now down to near longer term quarterly person's pivot support in the Russell against now a new kind of line in the sand, we want to call it, sort of speak. And take a look. This is the person's quarterly pivot support. Um, we're already down in the advanced decline back to where we were way over here. Uh, interesting concept is that the volume of this decline is not really significant. So that leads me to believe that we're closer to the lows in the Russell rather than looking for a new fresh leg to the downside. So watch the Russell. We should see some kind of support here on an intraday basis we had on the Russell. And I'm going to just uh, bring this over to your attention real quick. We'll go over to the futures. I'm going to go to my Russell. And then now let's take a look at our intraday page here. And I'll share this with you. 
So when I said we're, we're kind of getting a little bit of volume uptick, look at this pattern that we see. Now, there's a couple of things that we would be teaching traders, and I uh, do want you to know that we are having an exclusive seminar down here in West Palm Beach. Uh, we did promote that in the video the other day. So if you're interested, I would definitely tell everyone to take uh, note of that and, and attend. But here's the situation. This white line in the sand is the last conditional change indicator. That's another thing that I wrote about in my candlestick and pivot 14 years ago. It's a, a dynamic way of looking at a market and resistance. And as you can see, the market struggled against there. The volume on on balance volume, it's kind of showing that people aren't really wanting to sell against that green pivot line in, in the sand. And momentum and volume on this indicator is also showing there is maybe some interest in digging into some bottom picking against this support level. So the point I'm trying to make is that the short term intraday, while we don't have, there's just no PPS buy signal like one of these arrows yet. But if we get one of those and or close greater than 1652.90, that's the line in the sand, with this type of volume set up and the higher degree time frame, Russell, we stand a chance of bottoming and seeing a recovery. Today, I'm not sure. Tomorrow, possibly with the unemployment report. But somewhere down in here, I think the big froth of the, the, the selling pressure is starting to diminish in the Russell. And we can start looking over the next day or two for upside or outperformance Russell relative to the overall market um, and the small cap growth sector. After all, that's why they call it the January effect and domestic uh, small cap stocks should see some interest coming in over the next few days or after the unemployment report is out. So what about the rest of the market? This is a radar screen from TradeStation. And I just wanted to bring to your attention, as I pointed out, there are numerous, if we were it's Thursday now, but if it was Friday and it was the market close, uh, these are warning us how many new buy and sell signals are pressing in on the market right now. Well, first thing that you could clearly see, we're going to go over here and look at semiconductors, SMH. And this is what it's warning us, that right now in the semis, SMH, we are going to form a new fresh sell signal, a PPS sell signal, but there was a doji last week, and that makes it a low close doji weakening relative strength and de deafening weakening in the volume structure. So this this could give us uh, a little bit more downside pressure in the in the queues. Now, what are some of the top stocks in the semis? The first one that comes to mind is NVIDIA. And here's what I I just wanted to bring to your attention as I said I would in the tweet. I'd get a quick video out for you guys. The um, the concept in looking at relative strength is a stock that goes up and the overall market that goes up, the one that outperforms is the one you want to stick with. It's the winner. When it starts to weaken its relative strength, and that's the PMC indicator here, and that's what it's showing. Just like Amazon, it started to show some relative weakness in the marketplace, meaning it's made newer highs, but the relative strength is making lower highs. And look at the volume. Same story. In fact, it's actually starting to turn negative. Now, again, this is a weekly chart, and it's Thursday, so we won't have full information on this or trigger call to action until we see how the market closes on Friday. But I wanted to bring to your attention when I say we are generating numerous new fresh sell signals for the week, and look where they're coming from. Well, we already know about the Russell. I mean, it's been in a sell signal, and last week we got a sell signal. And it did go down. The relative strength had been weakening. So see the condition here? When you get a market that rallies and makes a newer high, just another case, and the relative strength makes a lower high, the market is susceptible for a pullback. And look at the volume indicator at the same time. It started to weaken as well and cross over. So this was warning us a week ago to look out below. So when I see that pattern, I say, whoa, heads up. And we have a lot of those patterns and a lot of fresh new sell signals coming. And look at the sectors. Consumer discretion. Excuse the bell there. We have biotech semis. And that's going to weigh on the queues. So maybe we get more relative weakness out of the queues in the coming week. Now, this is another pattern that kind of concerns me. 
um, namely because of the fact that the volume momentum, momentum of the volume has been deteriorating and we formed a doji last month and uh, here, I mean, if you, if you expect this thing to go up forever, at the very least, we're due for a pause or a mild correction and we could get one for the month of October in the NASDAQ. So perhaps we've got maybe some relative weakness out of the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ component sectors, semiconductors. Um, we have in biotech. And then we also, if we take a look at our relative strength, and just get this lined up for us. Look at the weakest sectors on the planet. Home construction, housing home builders, drug sector, real estate. Looking at the uh, small cap growth. Wow, that's representative of same thing with the uh, near the Russell. Of course, we double up with biotech, TLT, the bond ETF, XRT, retail sector. And it's not just exclusive to uh, again, uh, Amazon, but also stocks in the retail sector would include include like Ralph Lauren, which is, as you can see with this chart here on the daily chart, it's just been pummeled, right? So again, stocks that rally on weakening um, relative strength and weakening volume, we tend to avoid those. So that's that's really the, the pace of what the market looks like right now. I hope everyone, I, I promised I'd get this out to you. Uh, just real quickly, what's the strength of the market? Natural gas, crude oil, XOP. Um, we also have, believe it or not, the steel sector ETF. It's not showing a buy. It's just losing. It's not losing as much as the overall market. So that's your strength of the market with this blue and weakness is with all of this red. So there's more weakness than there is strength. But still, I think that the market may be a little bit uh, overindulged itself here in the Russell. And again, I think small cap sector stocks could find some value down near the person's pivot support, as well as finding the fact that it, the volume is not as heavy as one would expect if we're going to expect a full-fledged market crash to continue. Anyway, that's my um, video that I wanted to get out to you guys. I hope you found uh, this information at least helpful in moving forward of what we're looking at and why we look at certain tools. Thank you.